Sometimes there's way too many incredible figure releases in one month, and October was so jam-packed I felt it was my duty to present another 10. So with that said, welcome to 10 more figures released in October. If you haven't seen part 1, be sure to check it out, the link's in the description. Now with that said, let's begin with number 10. Ram Soyokusha ReZero Starting Life in Another World if the name Soyakusha doesn't sound familiar to you, I can hardly blame you. They're a company that from 2012 to 2015 only helped work on figures that other companies were already manufacturing. They started working on releases from Lechery but later worked with Good Smile Company. Only in 2016 did they finally decide to release a figure solo and they did so with their spectacular Sabre Bride. Fast forward all the way to January 2019 and they released this lingerie figure of Rem from ReZero, but she wasn't intended to be posed alone. Recently this figure of Rem joined her and they chose to pose her sitting in a majestic chair adjusting her stockings. Because can you really have one without the other? Rem was released with a larger base to make room for Rem and just just like with her previous release, they emulated a soft white carpet for them to be placed upon. Number 9. Yamada Elf Fat Company Eromanga Sensei I kept wanting to include this figure on a top 10 list for many months, but the release date just kept getting pushed back and then pushed back again multiple times until now it's finally been released. The cool thing about this figure is almost all of the other elf figures show her rocking her signature Lolita dress, there only exist three that display her in any other way. And ironically, they are all in swimsuits. Now out of the three, with one being a garage kit, it's my opinion that this figure stays the most faithful to the character, especially in the face. She was sculpted by Kiru Kiru who's done some great work previously and has a very soft touch when making his faces, so it's no wonder she turned out so good. Although the figure is 1 7 scale, she stands much taller because of the ginormous pink star base she's on. Number 8. Rem. Taito, ReZero, Starting Life in Another World. I'm gonna go on record and say that Taito are making some of the best Be Shoujo prize figures as of late, especially in their releases of Hatsune Miku. Rem seems to be their next star, as this is one of several previous and upcoming planned releases that are looking good. There's one in particular that I'm very excited for in November, but I'll save that for that month's video. This cheerleading figure comes in two versions, one in blue and one in pink, with Rem giving a cheeky wink in the pink version. Also, they have different pom-pom colours. I really want to touch this figure, because although it's just plastic, they've made it look breathable and sculpted a pattern to how they wanted the fabric to look. Number 7. Jervis, Funny Nights, Kantai Collection. Jervis was introduced to Can Kole at the start of 2018, and this is another one of those instances where 3D sculptors transform the official 2D artwork into figure form. Fans of the game might know that she's kind of transcended her popularity from just the series as many Can Kole girls have. There's a lot of fan artwork of her, she's a popular idol for Miku Miku dance videos, and now she's appeared as her first collectible scale figure. The character is based on a British destroyer class warship, the HMS Jervis, and so she was given an English European design with blonde hair and blue eyes. I was drawn to this figure because of her fairly unique eye colouring, as well as her sailor outfit, and obviously the icing on the cake is her ship pistol. Now try to say that 10 times fast. Ship pistol, ship pistol, ship pistol, ship pistol, ship pistol. <laughs> Number 6. Abe Nana, Wave, Idol Master, Cinderella Girls. Nana is a character that's appeared in both the Cinderella Girls anime series and the mobile games. And you know what's easily the best thing about her? Hirari, harari to She's an alien. That's right, she claims to be from the planet Usamin, and when asked to give her age, she states she's eternally 17. Oh, God bless you, Nana. God bless you! Her pose here was taken from one of the S Rare Plus cards, which I believe are part of the games. There was actually a garage kit four years earlier of her in this pose, but to nowhere near the same level of quality. 
The only bad thing about this figure is the issue with the water. In the card, it's clearly evident that the puddle of water is flowing out of the hose beside her. With the figure, not only does the hose not look like it's leaking water, but it also just abruptly ends on the edge of the base, clearly not attached to a tap or anything. It just looks like she's pissed us off. <laughs> Oh my god! No, I'm just joking because there's obviously the start of a pool next to her, but the thought did cross my mind. Now, if only they could make some of the Halloween code cards into figures, then I'd get really excited. Number 5, Hatsune Miku, Good Smile Company, Racing. Once again, it's Nendoroid time. This 2019 racing Miku Nendoroid is number 1100, but even more shocking than that, it's the 54th official full-size Nendoroid of Hatsune Miku released. That has to be some kind of record for releasing one single character the most times in a figure line. I'd actually love to see someone's collection who had them all lined up and displayed together. By now, I'm sure you guys know the drill, Miku Nendoroids have been around for a long time, but that doesn't make this figure any less beautiful. She comes with this year's racing car, which she can hop into, as well as a flag that she can wave, well, hold, anyway, and a few other options to customise her pose. Number 4, Ukita Akane, Poltra, Hachigatsu no Cinderella 9. This figure was very quick to come out. It's one of three figures being released from an anime that only finished airing in July. Even more amazingly, the first figure came out the very next month in August, and I think that's great. Announce the figure, release it when the popularity is at its peak, no more waiting six months to a year kind of deal. The series is based off a mobile game currently exclusive to Japan, and as you may have guessed, follows a woman's baseball team. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know anything about the series or the game. What I do know is the three figures together give this really cool vibe, all being part of a team and sharing a uniform. And my favourite is this one, because her hat is adorable. Apparently the character wears these giant ears on literally everything, so to modify an existing baseball cap to have giant ears is a level of dedication that I only wish I someday might know. Number 3, C2, Mega House, Code Geass, Lelouch of the Resurrection. Oh, how I love the new Code Geass movie. Although it may undermine everything that came before it, it was just so incredible seeing the characters back for one more time. And it's an excuse to release more figures. When I first saw this figure, I think my jaw may have smacked the ground. This is one of the most powerful and feminine figures of C2 that I've ever seen, and I do own a few. It's a quality figure for Code Geass fans, and a stylish decision to emulate a marble base and a stone pillar. But I think we all know what's really the best thing about this figure. Hmm? It was sculpted by MIC, who's a veteran artist having worked in the industry for over 13 years, and by now, they sure know how to show off the female anatomy. Number 2, Geralt of Rivera, CD Projekt Red, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The amazing thing about this figure is it's actually being made and sold by the company that developed the series. CD Projekt Red have opened an online store where they are now selling hand-painted polystone statues from the Witcher franchise, among other things. This particular statue depicts the Slavic Geralt as a Japanese ronin monster hunter. The statue's slogan is the world of the Witcher and medieval Japan meet to an awe-inspiring effect. And what a vision was realised with this piece. A lot of fine details are put into his armour and weaponry, and I notice them and respect that. For one thing, it was typical for samurai to carry a long katana, but also carry one or several short swords for quick attacks. If you take notice of his right arm, you can see he's wearing a chainmail combined with perhaps leather or steel. Although you could make the assumption that chainmail is a western technique, it was actually more frequently used in Japan, and recorded as early as the 13th century during the Mongol invasion. Geralt's sleeve greatly resembles the karata armour worn during the Edo period because of the rectangles resembling cards folded into it. Number 1, Yatogami Toka, Poltra, Date Alive. This figure follows the release of Origami, who I featured in my June figure video back when I first started this series. And Data Life figures have frequently been on my list since, because their quality is just undeniable. There is only a small handful of them out there, especially these scale figures, but from what there is, they are just knocking it out of the park. 
Now, this figure is obviously not for everyone. If girls bending over isn't your thing, then you're probably on the wrong channel. But for those who can appreciate this sort of thing on a foundational level, you know where I'm coming from when I place this figure at number one. Though it just missed out on the original list, I simply had to make a follow-up video, so here she is. And that was it for 10 more figures released in October. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for this month, November, top 10 figure list, as that'll be coming soon. And apart from that, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. See you. All right.